moron! Hey, moron! Duh! Look at me! I'm the whole water boy, dude! Ah, boy. Good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. My goodness. You know, we have been doing this, I, I want to say, hot and heavy is when this really took off. Okay. It wasn't hot and heavy. It was just, we really started going all in. In 2016, eight years, my Lord, I have been doing this for eight years. Eight years ago, I had, going into the season, about 300 subscribers. And now we're sitting here with 116,000. And I cannot thank you guys enough. And every day I start my day, whether I'm here at my home or on the road with you guys, and I can't think of a better way to start my day. You know, it's crazy because I have so many people that here support me, they, they care about me, they, they show love and everything else. And on the other side of the fence, I have all of the trolls and the people that just want to bring you down. And I love them too. I, I love it. Because no matter what they say, no matter what they do, as long as there is breath, in my lungs, and I can speak, I will be here. And, and I will say, if I can't speak, I, I, I might even try and write it out or type it out. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm literally like a walking dead when it comes to YouTube. I am always going to be here till the day I die. And so this morning, I feel good because we're beginning to get a little taste with OTAs. We know we got rookie mini camp starting out uh, next week, and the Cowboys are seemingly beginning to make moves. You know, there's certain things that happen that we seem to have selective memory or short memory only. People don't remember a lot of the history or the past. For example, the Eagles go out, they sign lots and lots of free agents. Lots of teams go out and sign free agents. And, you know, they all, all of a sudden, they're the best team in football. They're going to do great things. And then when the season gets there and they don't, they forget that they said that they were going to do great things. You couldn't tell people three years ago that Denver wasn't going to be a juggernaut getting Randy Gregory, getting Russell Wilson, that they were going to be great because they cared about winning football. You couldn't tell people last year that, you know, getting Aaron Rodgers with all the pieces they had and their great young coach, Robert Sala, that they weren't going to be a Super Bowl team. Yeah, and I know people will say, well, but Aaron Rodgers got injured. Well, when you're dealing with older players, that happens. And here we are. You know, just like every year, they go through and they basically look and they say, well, these are the playoff teams last year that were good. They're all going to be playoff teams and they're our top 10 teams in the NFL. Knowing that half of those teams that make the playoffs are going to be ass-ass the next year and not. Remember when people were looking at the Giants and they said, Daniel Jones has finally arrived Daniel Jones got the $160 million, $40 million a year contract. They were, you know, had finally made the playoffs and won a playoff game. How'd they do last year? How'd they do? So it's my job to try and bring you back down to earth a little bit, okay? And give you a little taste of reality because we have a lot of signings that happen that are for the short term that don't necessarily become big things. Everybody looked and they said, oh my God, Baltimore got Odell Beckham Jr. Man, great weapon for Lamar Jackson. They're going to the Super Bowl. $15 million a year, they cut him. They cut him. He's now down in Miami. And now you're hearing Miami. They got Odell, man. They're going to the Super Bowl. You know, they already had three kill. And Tua. But, but be that as it may, 
Then it'll end up being at the end of the year, he goes on to another team and will repeat the cycle. And the Cowboys, of course, have the notoriety of not doing big things in free agency or big moves on their team. But I want to actually give you an example today where sometimes the subtle moves are the, actually the bigger moves. Give you an example, okay? And I mean no disrespect to the Eagles, but you couldn't tell the Eagles when they signed Nani Azamoa as a free agent that they didn't get the best quarterback in football. And he was there for two years, and this is the dream team to year 2012. Got about $25 million, which was a lot at that time, 12 years ago, and ended up being a bust. You couldn't tell the Washington Commanders when they signed Albert Hainsworth to a good defense that they weren't going to be a juggernaut to a $100 million contract. And when the Cowboys sign somebody, most of the time it's like, meh, eh. So let me give you an example. Last year, the Eagles traded with the Titans to get um, Kevin Bayard. Safety. He needs safety help. They brought him in for 10 games. They sent safety Terrell Edmonds and a fifth and a sixth round pick to get Kevin Bayard. So a player, a fifth and a sixth. Now, I remind you, the two fifths we used, we got Stephon Gilmore and Brandon Cooks. He played for him for 10 games. It cost him an additional $3.1 million. Now, what they ended up doing was before, um, well, on March 1st, they decided to get rid of him. They released him, okay, so that way it wouldn't cost him $9.6 million in base money and $14 million in cap money. So they literally spent a player, a fifth, and a sixth to bring in a guy, 30-year-old safety, $3.1 million, two picks and a player for 10 games. That was a disappointment. Now, let me give you a different one. The Cowboys signed in 2021 Malik Hooker, one-year deal for $920,000, which had $490,000 guaranteed and an average salary of $900,000. He then got a contract extension in 23 that had him as a cap number of $4.5 million last year and as a cap number of three point nine eight this year. In his time with the Cowboys, Pro Football Focus ranked him 10th overall at safety with a 77, run-stopping fourth best, with an 84 ranking. In those years, the three years that he's played for us, he's had five interceptions. He's had 44 tackles um, in 21, 62 in 22, and 50 last year. Now, I know that's not the big splash move, that people look at and say, oh, my God, man, we need these guys. But to have a free agent, because, see, typically, when you sign free agents, they have a shelf life usually of about two years. After about two years, they get too expensive to hold on to, and you move on. And here it is. Malik Hooker is going through his fourth year with the Cowboys. Didn't give up any draft picks have a contract that has been extremely team friendly in three seasons in three seasons they'll pay them 10 million dollars that my friends excuse me um not in 10 years excuse me excuse me excuse me i got that wrong in four years 
they'll pay them about $10 million. So we may not be happy about not getting the big names and the big splashes and it happening the first week or so, but the Cowboys have been really, really shrewd with some of these signings. Now, their contracts, for the most part, now, now that's a great contract right there. When it comes to re-signing their own guys, it seems like they get bent over the table. Uh, they just do. Um, they don't know how to deal with the big ones. The smaller ones and the free agents that they do bring in, they've done better than actually they get credit for. So I don't know how much Zeke Elliott has left in the tank. I don't know how good he'll be. I don't know if the Cowboys look at him and say he is going to be our answer for the season. I hope that we'll bring in some more and that we'll do another shrewd move. Um, but I honestly feel like the Cowboys really aren't that far away from really being a really good team. Now, already I'm getting San Francisco fans and Eagle fans and all that are saying, oh, you're saying you got enough talent to go. I didn't say we had enough talent to go Super Bowl. Not yet. But I'm going to say that we could be in the mix with a few more moves. Let's listen in this morning. ESPN talking about Zeke Elliott, of course, returning. Elliott. He returned to the Cowboys this week. Dak Prescott had this to say to the Fort Worth Star Telegram on the signing. Quote, super excited, just obviously knowing our history, my experience with him as a brother. But in this case, as a teammate, understanding what he brings to the team, just the locker room alone, the culture he sets, a guy that does everything the right way from the locker room to the field. Here's Zeke on the reunion. Obviously, you know, me and Dak are close, so, you know, he, he wanted yeah. me to come back, but, you know, he wasn't too pussy for disrespecting my decision, but uh, he definitely... I definitely felt the I felt the one. I think it was important to me just to get back here uh, and finish. You know what I started. The guy will finish business. Um, here to chase the ring. Seemed like a party wherever that was. Uh, Tim, do the Cowboys have enough on this <laughs> roster to make a playoff run, and more specifically, a deep playoff run? I think they do if they get a little more help. Funny, we're hearing from, you know, Zeke. Like, if they get a little more help at the running back position, mm -hmm. I actually think even adding Zeke, like, that's really the, the glaring hole. They got a little bit younger on the offensive line through the draft. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've talked so much about, hey, the future and the fear about the future in terms of Dak's contract and CD's contract and, and Micah Parsons' contract. But the reality is, is like, they're all there this year. They're all there playing, and there are other good players around them. And mm -hmm. I think if they get it figured out in terms of adding another running back, which I actually believe is a position that they can address, you know, kind of as we get closer to the start of the season, somebody gets released, maybe there's a trade of some sort. Like, I think that can happen. And so, uh, yeah, I do. I think that Dallas is still a very good football team with plenty very of talent for this upcoming season. Yeah, Tim mentioned those contracts, Jeremy, that are kind of down the road a little bit, even though we're talking about them in the immediate. What is going on there with CD, with yeah. Dak, with Micah Parsons? What do we know? Well, Laura, there are going to be fireworks in Dallas over the next three to four months in their front office to figure all this out. Because the message I'm getting when I talk to people is that the Cowboys do want to re-sign Dak Prescott. That that will be a priority for them. But the actions so far have been described to me as passive. There really isn't a lot going on yet on the contract front. Now, they have plenty of time before training camp to have It'll some preliminary in training discussions. Camp, but as of right now, Prescott's sitting with a $61 million cap hit Ooh. on next year, and there's been nothing done about it. Then you got C.D. Lamb. The wide receiver market is now pretty clear. It's $30 million a year. We just saw A.J. Brown year. did a deal with Philadelphia. His 61. It's 55 this year. It's 55 this year, and it's 40 next year. What, what are we talking? 61. I, it, okay. Again, I don't know what you're talking about. But that's what we got for you guys this morning. And, of course, any news or anything that changes, we, of course, will be bringing it to you guys. I appreciate it this morning. I am, um, today, my wife woke up and she's like, oh, the honeydew list. And you know, let's paint these cabinet doors and what can we do with the screened in porch that you took the screens off of and what else are we gonna what else are we gonna do today and i was like you know 
I've been working over there at the house that's an hour and a half away. Uh, I said it was just a week ago. We were in Detroit and things. I said, you know, I kind of want to take it a little bit easy today. I, I do. I, I just want to just kind of catch my breath. We only have a week before we go to Vermont uh, where we're going to be rebuilding some homes. And you know what? I don't want to kill myself today. I don't want to kill myself today. Although, we are going to be doing something really, really cool. Um, I am so blessed with this house and everything that's happened. Uh, the Waynesboro Historic Commission has actually made a donation for our walkway where we're going to be doing customized pavers. And what we're going to do is, with the money that they got, that they gave to us, I'm going to end up doing a video on this, um, we're getting eight by eight pavers. If you've seen like the pavers that I have um, that are actually in Texas Stadium around AT&T, these are brick ones, but they're going to be the decades. So 1820, 1830. And we're going to put down like three historical things that happened during those decades. So as you're walking up to the house, you'll be walking into a timeline going back in the past and seeing all of the things or some of the things that have happened during the time of this house being here. And I think that's going to be cool. And people who want to have a stone, excuse me, a brick paver customized with their name or their business or, you know, things within reason. I know trolls will say F you Mark Holmes. Um, we'll be able to do that too. And it'll help us to raise money to get this house put on the historic registry. So I'm actually excited about that and very thankful for the Waynesboro Historic Commission. All right, good people. That's all I got for you right now. We're going to get out here. And I guess, even though I've said I was going to take it easy, I know I'll end up doing a whole bunch of shit on the honeydew list for mama. Because that's what we do, guys. That's what we do. All right. Peace out.